Two men united in their quest for justice, but divided by a common language. Okay, that's all right. Right? Now? Yes, right. Are you sure? Where are you now? Temple tube station. Along with half of London. I know where I am, Q. Where's he? Today we're going to look at British versus American English, and in particular, three pronunciation features that divide these two Englishes. And I'm gonna need some help. Representing Britain, we have James Bond, 007. And representing the United States of America, Ethan Hunt from Mission Impossible. And don't let looks deceive. Is I'm as ugly as they come. Now I'll be honest with you, your life is in danger. I came to tell you that your life is in danger and I need your help. Did you hear how Ethan Hunt said you're and danger, whereas James Bond says it very differently? Have another listen. Now I'll be honest with you, your life is in danger. I came to tell you that your life is in danger and I need your help. Okay, so Ethan Hunt's more like your and danger, whereas James Bond it's your and danger. So the R sound at the end of those words is really pronounced with Ethan Hunt's accent, but not so much with James Bond. Your life, your life is in danger. Now the R sound is one of the key sounds that divides British English and American English, but it wasn't always the case. Now according to John Algeo in his book, The Cambridge History of the English Language, English in North America, there was very little difference between the two Englishes in the late 18th century when the American Revolution broke out. In fact, at the time, it was so hard to distinguish between the two accents of British and American naval officers that the American government considered providing certificates of citizenship for their men. Around this time, the accent that we've come to know as received pronunciation started to distinguish itself from other accents and removed the R sound. Uh, this was a move mainly by the upper classes, but soon it spread across England, although interestingly, it never made it to Scotland or Northern Ireland. So as a result, we can broadly say that British English is non-rhotic and American English is rhotic. But of course there are examples of exceptions. So essentially what this means is that in British English we don't pronounce that R sound when it comes after a vowel in a syllable. So door, near, later, you can't hear the R sound. Whereas in American English it would be door, near, later. Okay, so here's another example of Ethan Hunt using that rhotic R sound and James Bond, well, he doesn't use it. 50 million dollars. Let Benji go. I know where I am, Q. Where's he? Now, what do you use in your spoken English? Let me know in the comments below. Do you use that rhotic R sound like American English, or is your accent non rhotic like lots of British English accents? Okay, the second pronunciation feature that we're going to look at is the A and R sounds. Your boss must be well connected. I've never seen so much go out the door so quickly. Not quite so stylishly. May I ask you where it is? I know what you're thinking. Maybe they're not here for you. Maybe they're just here for me. Are you willing to take that chance? Okay, did you notice the difference in the way they pronounced the letter A? For James Bond, it was ask, ask, but for Ethan Hunt, it was chance. Chance, that ah sound. Let's listen to them again. May I ask you where it is? Are you willing to take that chance? So in RP and Southern English accents, you've got the R and A sounds. You have a distinction between the two. Whereas in American English, it's just the A sound. So ask in British English would be ask in American English. Chance in British English would be chance in American English. Now this shift from the A to the R sound is another distinctive feature of RP and how it changed as it emerged in the late 18th century. Now it's interesting to know that in the north of England, this distinction was never made. So it's that same A sound. So in Manchester, it would be ask, it would be chance, it would be laugh right? Similar sound to in American English. So when I say British English uses an R sound, I'm really just saying RP and the Southern English accents. In other British accents, in Liverpool, in Manchester, in Birmingham, it's that A sound. 
And of course, in American English, there are some variations as well. I believe that in uh, New England and New York, they might use that R sound as well. But if we're going to generalize, we could broadly say that in American English, it's that A ah sound. And in British English, Southern British English, it's that R sound. All right, let's get two more examples of Mr. Hunt and Mr. Bond. Remember I told you about the sheep's tail? Well, math is totally sheep. That's how he wiped me out. Same goes for the implant. I not sound too silly about losing that. The way this ends is you and me, Elaine, face to face. Only this time I won't be locked in a glass box. You want your money? The bone doctor's gonna have to get out of me. Okay, did you hear implant? Implant, not implant, implant. And then Ethan Hunt says glass, not glass. Same goes for the implant. I won't be locked in a glass box. All right, our third pronunciation feature is something we call yod dropping. Yod dropping. What an interesting term that is. Now, a yod essentially is just the y sound, the y. So, for example, yes, the y in yes, that's a yod. So, both in British English and American English, they would insert a y sound in a word like beautiful. Beautiful. So, be and then beautiful, beautiful. That's that inserted yod. Now, yod dropping is when you take that y sound. Out. So actually, in uh, British English, in East Anglia, which is in the east of England, they would drop the y there. So they'd say beautiful, beautiful, right? Beautiful. As opposed to my accent and most other British English accents, you say beautiful. Now, in American English, it's very common to drop the y sound in words that have a t, a d, and a n before an oo sound. So for example, what's this platform? YouTube in British English, YouTube in American English, that tube, tube, that y is gone, it's been removed. But in British English, YouTube, it kind of, we call it a yod coalescence, we kind of get a tube, tube. So take the word student, for example, as I say, student, but in American English, student, student. Uh, one of my favourite ones, duty in British English, duty in American English. Yeah. Let's hear Ethan Hunt and James Bond say these sounds. Where the hell have you been? Enjoying death. 007 reporting for duty. Is your oxygen on? There's no atmosphere at this altitude. I don't need you blacking out of me. Now, if you want to learn more about this topic, you can check out Christine Rowe's article, How Americans Preserved British English. It's a fantastic read. I'll link it just below. And if you want to learn more about James Bond 007's British English accent, you can click on this video here. And if you want to learn all about the accents of English Premier League football players like Harry Kane, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Jack Grealish, you can click right here and I'll see you in the next video.